Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is called Angle Side Angle Congruence. So we'll talk about what is Angle Side Angle and then um, uh, we'll do some proofs at the end of this. And don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com and make sure you click the Integrated Math 1 link. So our question here is what is uh, the ASA, which is Angle Side Angle uh, Triangle Congruence th Theorem, tell us about triangles? Okay. So before we do that, let's answer some questions about opposite sides and angles and adjacent sides and angles. So here's a triangle ABC over here. So what angle is opposite side BC? Okay, so here's side BC. So the angle opposite is if we go straight across, it's angle A, okay? So we need to know those kind of relationships, okay? So what, what side is opposite angle C? Well, here's angle C, so the side opposite would be side AB, okay? What side is included with uh, angles A and B? So here's angle A up here. Here's angle B up here. What side is touching both of them? It would be this side here. Again, it would be side AB. That is called the included side between these two angles right here, okay? What angle is included with side AC and AB? Here's AC over here. Here's AB. What angle is included between these two sides right here? It would be this angle up here, angle A. Okay, what side is adjacent to angle B? Adjacent means next to, so the one that's touching angle B. So there's two sides. This side is adjacent and this side is adjacent, so either AB or BC. Okay, what angle is adjacent to side BC? Here's side BC right here. Which angle is adjacent to it? Which angle is next to it? Or it's it's either this angle or this angle right here. Adjacent means next to, touching it, okay? Opposite means you go straight across, and next to, adjacent means... Um, uh, right next to it. And included means it has to be included either between two angles, a side isn't included between two angles, or this angle right here, angle B, is included between these two sides. All right, so that's what included and opposite and all that stuff means. So angle side angle uh, triangle uh, congruence theorem just says this. If two angles and the included side, okay, we just talked about that. Two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, that means the triangles are congruent. Okay, so here's a picture right here. Here I have this angle and this angle and the included side congruent to this angle and this angle and its included side. So that way these triangles are, are congruent by, check this out, <clears throat> angle, side, I'm sorry, angle, side, angle. Can you see the side, the S is in between the two angles? It's included between the two angles. Okay, angle, side, angle. And up here it would go this angle, then this side, and then this angle. Or you can start here and go this angle angle, side, angle right there. Okay, my finger slipped, sorry. Okay, so once we know that they're congruent, then all the other parts are congruent by the CPCTC, what we talked about in that last lesson. Okay, so determine whether the triangles are congruent, and so then explain. Okay, so here we have two triangles, and they gave us a couple of angles over here. It's 45 and 61, and here's 74 and 61. So I know the 61s are congruent, and they also I know this side is congruent right here. Okay, so now notice that this side right here on this triangle is the included side between these two angles right here. So what we need to do is see if this angle is going to be the same as this one. Then I can say angle side angle. So let's check it out. So let's find angle D, you guys. So angle D by the triangle sum theorem, you guys, all the angles add up to 180. So uh, all three of these angles over here add up to 180. So if we plug in 74 and 61 and whatever the rest of it is to get us 180, and it's just a little arithmetic now, and then subtract, so we get 45. So now we can say, yes, since uh, angle side angle, by angle side angle, those triangles are congruent. And notice how I mark these figures. It's important to mark them, you guys. So you can see it goes angle side angle. If you don't show these markings while you're going through this, it's hard harder to see. It's much harder to see. you got to so, show an arc here, two arcs on another one, and then the included side. Because if it was this side over here, it would not be the included side. Okay, so with the markings, this, uh, this says angle, side, angle. This one over here says angle, side, angle. So the triangles are congruent by the ASA theorem. Okay, how about these ones? 
are these triangles congruent? Okay, so here I have a 31 and a side of 62 and an angle of 110. Over here we have a 31 and a side of 62, and we need to see if this angle is 110 right there. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, uh, triangle sum theorem right here. And we need to find out if angle P is equal to 110 degrees, okay? So let's go ahead and plug in 31 plus 38 from this triangle over here. And we'll do our arithmetic and add those together and subtract 69. And we get 111. It's not 110. So none of the angles have a 110 degree angle measure. So there's no rigid motion that can uh, map this triangle onto this one. Remember, rigid motion makes uh, uh, congruent triangles. So, so uh, these guys are not congruent right there, okay? There is no angle-side angle. All right, so let's prove that triangles are congruent using the angle-side angle theorem, okay? So they usually give a start off with, off with a picture right here, and they give us some given information. This is accepted to be true, and we're going to use this given information with this figure and maybe a couple other things right here, like reflexive property or anything else if they gave us anything else we're going to use reflexive property here to prove that this is congruent that the uh, at triangle MQP so here's MQP is congruent to triangle and go in this order NPQ NP Q. Okay. All right. So uh, that means that all these co these letters are in the same order as these letters right here. Okay. So they're going to give you a hint and tell you um, uh, some given information right here. So this given information, I went ahead and marked it, you guys. I marked these angles in blue just because they were the bigger angles. I could have marked them um, with one arc, but I marked them with two arcs right here. And then these angles in red. Okay. So that's given information right there. Okay. So they're telling us it's going to be a four-step proof. Well, here's some easy points right here. Just throw that given information down. Okay, we know that those are going to be two of the steps. And we also know that this proof statement is always the last statement right here. So let's go ahead and put that as statement number four right there. That's the proof statement right there. All right, so uh, right here, the reflexive property, this piece equals itself for the top triangle and for the bottom triangle. They share a piece, so we can say... QP in the top triangle equals QP in the bottom triangle by the reflexive property, okay? Now, can you see that these triangles follow the pattern of angle, side, angle, and then we'll go from red uh, angle to the side to the blue angle right here. So angle, side, angle in the top and bottom. So just write ASA. This means angle, side, angle, okay? And we're done, okay? Now, if you kind of got that, I'm terrific with that. I'm fine, okay? So uh, here's some easy points right here. They're going to tell you here's, um, uh, you're going to set it up, and there's five uh, pieces to this, all right? Well, the first piece is always the given information right there, okay? So there's two, p there's points right there, free points, okay? If you don't know how to do anything else, then do the free points. This is all also free points. This goes right down here. So let's go ahead and put that right down here. Okay. Now let's mark the figure, the given information. Angle C is congruent to angle A. So I'm going to put an angle mark there and there. Okay. They told us that right there. All right. Now this one says that E is the midpoint. E is the midpoint of segment AC. So here's AC. So midpoints by definition of a midpoint, it divides it up into two equal spots. So they're going to tell us definition of a midpoint. So I'm going to say this side here equals this side here. So um, uh, let's go ahead and put that information down right there. So AE equals CE. Here, to, uh, A to E equals C to E because they told us E was the midpoint of the whole AC. So that's just definition of a midpoint. All right, now I'm going to give you a hint right here. It says vertical angles are congruent. Okay, do you see any vertical angles? Vertical angles are angles that are formed by intersecting lines. So I'm going to choose these two angles right here. And I think I'm going to say, I forgot what order I said, I think I'm going to say angle A, E, B. Okay, I'm going to say it just like it said right here. A, E, B, except I'm going to put an angle symbol, is uh, congruent to angle C, E, D. So C, E, D. That would be this angle right here. Okay, so vertical angles are congruent. Okay, and then look, can you see the angle, side, angle with the markings? you got to mark them, you guys. Notice I marked these because of the vertical angles. Now I can see angle, side, angle, so those triangles congruent by angle, side, angle. 
All right, let's try another one here, you guys. Okay, so here we got uh, this picture right here, and they told us there's four statements. All right, now, um, it's easier to see if we separate up these two triangles right here. Why these triangles J, M, L? Look, here's J, M, L. It's hard to see when it's blended together right there, so spread them apart. So there I did it right down there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and throw the givens. This is going to be, this goes right here, and we're going to say the reason is given, and this goes right here, and we're going to say that reason is given. Free points, okay? And then we went and marked the figure, okay? J-L-M. So here's J-L-M. That's this guy's congruent to um, uh, K-M-L, K-M-L. So we marked it with this blue mark right here. And then this right here, this other given, is this angle and this angle. Okay, now look, this is L-M. This is L-M right here. Oh, well, some more free points. Don't forget the proof statement goes there. And then I'm going to say L-M equals L-M by the reflexive property. They both have side L-M right there. So I marked it right there. And look, angle, side, angle again. Angle, side, angle angle side angle so it's the included side that's what angle side angle means okay so s is included between the two angles it's the included side right there all right you guys if you're in my class that would be your assignment take care